Hi guys, Jill here. Welcome to my channel and welcome to this week's Helper Hair Q&A. So this is kind of a twofer today because I feel like both of these can, can really go hand in hand. The first one is regarding toppers and wigs, and that is, will they give me headaches? The second one is how to stop wigs from itching, and do all wigs make you itch? So itchiness, do all wigs itch? For those of you that are contemplating buying a wig, this might be a big question for you. And I have to say that it varies from brand to brand for me. Um, now, I feel like at some point during the day, no matter what I'm wearing, I'm gonna feel I'm gonna feel like I'm gonna need to itch a little bit more. But for instance, this is a hand-tied, 100% hand-tied cap. This is the Elizabeth wig by John Renault in Shaded Praline, and. Um, this is so comfortable. These hand tied caps are, are really, really nice. Um, I don't tend to be irritated by them much. Uh, maybe in the back every now and then I'll feel like I need to get my finger up there and kind of itch it a little bit. I, I don't know. I think that's just general um, when you have a little bit of friction, you know, and, and things are moving around, it, it's going to cause a little bit of friction there with your own hair and might cause some itchiness. That's the kind of itchiness I get from a cap like this. Just just every now and then, it's like, I just okay, I just got to itch it a little bit. But it's not irritating me. The lace front isn't irritating me. And, um, you know, the perimeter around, not irritating me. So this is a lovely, comfortable cap. Um, I think if you're prone to itchiness or if you're looking for pure comfort, the hand-tied caps are going to be the way to go. However, um, for me, there are other issues that can bring on more intensity of itching to the point where I cannot wait to get it off when I get home and that's so irritating and it really kind of makes you not even want to put up with wearing them anymore when it's like that. So I've learned that there are certain cap features that, that can really up the ante when it comes to itchiness. And, and all of that. And so I've learned that I really have to have moleskin or velvet on my um, the little temple tabs or the ear tabs. I prefer to have the same thing with the nape area and extended nape with um, some velvet or moleskin back there as well. Um, I don't like closed caps that are completely closed, you know, that have that kind of lacing material that close in the entire top of the cap for some reason. I don't know if maybe it brings up my body temperature a little bit. Maybe I sweat a little and it causes itching. I found that I cannot wear those comfortably and it's a bummer because I've had to get rid of all of my Noriko wigs for that reason. Um, and I love the fibers on Noriko wigs. I think they are amazing. Um, so I've noticed that Noriko has come out with some monopart versions to some of their styles, which is intriguing. But again, I have to really pay attention to some of those other features. So for me personally, that ups the ante for itching. I have had some wigs that are inexpensive, but they don't go the extra mile. You know, you're not paying for those little extra features which is what brings down the price. So you really kind of have to hop in there and just experiment um, and see what features may help you with that. For me, those are a couple of the things that, that I really have to have. Another thing that can really irritate me is depending on the brand I've noticed is the lace front. John Renault lace fronts don't bother me at all. So whatever it is they're using or however they, maybe it's more of a construction thing that they do with their lace fronts. I'm not sure, but they don't bother me at all. I have read that John Renault bothers other people when it comes to the lace fronts. So again, you're gonna have to figure that out. Raquel Welch wigs are gorgeous. They're my second favorite. I absolutely love them, but they itch me a little more. The, the lace fronts do tend to bug me a little. And, um, you know, I'm kind of like wanting to get my fingers under there. It's not to the point where I won't buy a Raquel Welch wig or wear them. <laughs> so it's not obviously that bad. But I also tend to itch a little more along the perimeters underneath with the Raquel Welch wigs. I don't know why. 
there are some brands that I really don't even want to say that I have learned for me personally that I cannot uh, do. Now I talked about the Noriko, but um, man, I tell you what, you need to experiment with them because their fibers are gorgeous. The longest wearing detangling, I don't have any issues with their fibers and I want to love the, the feel and I want those caps to be comfortable, but thus far they haven't been. But you need to try them out because I'm telling you it's some of the 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 most versatile wonderful fibers that i have experienced especially if you tend to like the medium longer wigs i'm telling you they are wonderful so beyond that there are things that you can do to cut down on itching and that is you can wear a wig cap on top of your hair get your hair under there and wear a wig cap because that wig cap essentially is going to be a buffer between the cap construction and your scalp and and so that can be very very helpful there are a couple different kinds of wig caps if you're really wanting to cut down on the itching I think you're gonna have to go with something kind of more like this and these are a little bit more challenging to put on over your hair um, but I think if itching is an issue you might want to try one of these out they come looking like this in a little package and once you secure your hair just really carefully kind of stick this over the top and it really can help with the itching there are also these netting type ones which um, again can act as a buffer between you and the wig but the material itself I find might not be the remedy that you're looking for but you'll have to experiment these are really nice if you really want to try to gather up your hair because this is the part that's going to be on top so you can you know put this on kind of like a necklace at first this is going to be the part that's going to go around the hair the base here of your you know this area and then you're going to you know kind of pull up the rest of your hair in this lace cap and then you can hold it and kind of work the hair around and get it flat and um, put your wig on over the top of that um, so the key really I think is to get your wig very secure the, the the more your wig moves around just a little bit it doesn't take much it can really cause this itchiness to happen so I secure my wigs in the front a lot of times with it stays I'll do wig tape for the back I really don't want my wig moving around much at all um, those of you that like the wig grips you can put something like this you know on and then you can do your wig uh, grip over that and get your wig on and it's going to stay there but this hopefully will cut down on little friction that can happen between your hair and the wig and it might really help you with the itching so you you might want to try that me personally um, I'm experimenting with that again I have found though being hypersensitive the least I have going on under a wig the more comfortable I am so right now because I'm filming I do have one of no wait I don't have one of these oh no I don't I don't have any kind of wig wig cap on um, at all I just kind of put my hair up and clipped it and made it flat and then I did put a wig grip on and I have this now um, on over all of that my wig over that so um, that's because I'm filming I'm really not planning on going out today and when I'm done filming more likely than not I'll probably take off my wig you know and continue my day I do have to clean my kitchen anyway but if I am going to be spending most of my day in a wig I will not put a wig grip on and I'll use it stays all around the border here around the hairline the perimeter and if it's a style that I need extra make sure that that nape is not you know going anywhere like ignite I will use wig tape um, just to secure it and that way it's comfortable it's not moving and I am good to go and it, that lack of movement alone cuts down on itching tremendously but if you're wearing a wig that the lacing is irritating you you're still doing this and you're you know you're getting ir irritation around the border of the wig or something you might want to experiment with some different wig brands and or wig features that you have yet to try that can really cut down on that so with all of that said 
If you have not yet experimented with wigs quite yet and you're pondering and you're wondering what it's like and what it feels like to wear a wig all day and if, if you just ever feel like you're just not wearing anything and it's part of you and all of that. For me, I can only speak for me, I, f I know I'm wearing a wig all day. I feel it. you're literally wearing kind of a hat that's covering your head all day long. Um, so yes, I, I feel like I'm wearing a wig all day. I have learned a few things along the way and how to make the experience a better experience for me and my head. Um, and so I've learned what features that I can't live without and what features that I can. can. Um, and it all depends too, is this gonna be kind of my everyday go-to wig? Because if it is, I have to make that very comfortable. Or is this gonna be a special occasion wig that, that I can do and look fabulous, but you know, just kind of bite the bullet and get through. Um, you know, so it's just all, all just depends. And so you're gonna feel it on your head. You really, you are. And, and there's gonna be some caps that as you start wearing wigs more often and they become very much a part of your life, you kind of get used to that a little bit and then you know which ones are the most comfortable for you and which ones aren't. So you get used to a lot of things. One of the things, I'm going a little off topic, but it's all about comfort really. So one of the things that I did when I was first wearing wigs is I felt like I needed to get the back of the cap right down to like where my hair would grow, you know, maybe just a little bit, you know, we have those ones we kind of have to shave a little bit. Like I really felt like I needed to pull that wig just all the way down here. And that kind of pulled it and let it set very, very close to the backs of my ears which is where I want to go and talk about to next after this. And that's kind of what it did, you know, because um, my measurements from here to here, I want to say it's 21. So I usually have a lot of play and I, I felt like I just needed to bring it down and then the wig would just really squish up to the back of my ears and, you know, I wear glasses. So it all made it all very uncomfortable. So what I've learned is that no, that wig is not supposed to go down that low. It's actually supposed to kind of go and right up under the occipital bone back there. Depends on your head shape, but we all have an, an occipital bone. But it depends on your head shape and how much of a curve kind of you have there that is gonna stop the wig right there. So if you have a flatter head, you might need a little bit of something something. Whether it's a wig grip, it stays, a little bit of wig tape. You might have to put your hair in a low pony back there if it's short enough. Just a little ledge to keep it there. But don't be alarmed if your wig naturally kind of wants to go and tuck underneath the occipital bone. That's where it's supposed to be and it helps it kind of just like be where it's supposed to be and that way you can push up and have a little gap between the, the wig and the back of your ear and it has become incredibly more comfortable for me across the board to wear my wigs technically the way they were always supposed to be worn. So that's another thing. One of the places that I will get itchiness is behind my ear and on top of my ear, kind of all around there. And that's because my head measurements make it as such that wigs tend to touch the back of my ears and that's not good. Patty from Wigs by Patty's Pearls um, recommends a finger width between your ear and where that wig starts. That's a lot. I never ever get that. Sometimes the, the shape and the, the those measurements of your head, which I'm gonna put a link down below in the comment box. John Renault has a really great YouTube video on how to properly measure your head for wigs. So I'm gonna put that link down there. I've watched many of them and I feel like that's the best one. It's very straightforward and easy to understand. Um, but you know, and then you take those measurements and you look on a measurement chart with the, you know, the brand, this is John Renault, so they can vary. So I just want to put that out there. So if you look on, you do that, you do that, and then you go on John Renault's chart, um, then it's going to, you're going to look and, and my measurements were a little all over the place. One of my measurements put me in a child size wig. Um, another one, you know, put me in petite and then another one put me in an average. So they can be all over the place. They're not going to necessarily all line up. So because of that, they tell you to go with the absolute largest size. So I wear an average. I can get into an average petite um, and that's probably going to fit me like a, a wig should a little better, but I, I tend to just buy averages and not all styles come in average petite. And I have, all, have also found that average petite's not the same in every brand. 
it's a learning experience, you guys. It really is a big learning curve when you're first getting in there. I'm still learning constantly, constantly, constantly. Anyways, so what my measurements and the way they are all over the place, you know, I could have a wig fit great from here to here, but I will have wigs touching and bunching up in the back of my ear. So sometimes I'll put it stays up a little bit and I'll hold it there and it'll be good. I don't usually ever have like a bubble up here where there's a big space because if I did, I would definitely have to go down a size. And if that uh, style didn't come in a, a lower size, I would, um, with a wefted cap, you can bring in the size of the cap and sew it. And there's tons of videos on YouTube about that and really make that cap fit me better because Bunching up behind your ears is going to not feel good. It's going to be difficult to wear glasses. It's going to itch you, itch you and be very bothersome during the day. And But unfortunately, almost every single wig I have uh, will touch the back of my ear. So like for instance, I'll just kind of bring it up so, it, so it'll be more comfortable and bring it back. The back of my wig might go up a little bit when I do that. but it makes it more comfortable for me to to wear and to enjoy you know that particular way through the day so if you are prone to headaches and you feel like you're going to get a headache you're afraid to get into wigs because of that I would say you're gonna to have to just try and see how it is but these are some things that you can do to make sure and hopefully help eliminate that from happening one of the major things is make sure that wig isn't too tight Make sure you're not buying too small of a wig because that kind of compression through the day will certainly give you a headache. If your wig is fitting fine, you need to make sure that what you're putting on under the wig isn't too tight. So for instance, you don't want the band around here that's gonna go to be too tight. And sometimes we forget about that. Same with this, this one here. Make sure that this isn't comp giving you some, some compression right there. Um, that can be an issue. Another thing is your wig grips. Make sure your wig grip is not too tight. You know, your wig may be great, but all of what you're using underneath could be doing some compression throughout the day. And while it may feel really secure right out of the gate, um, it can really throughout the day cause an issue and give you a headache. So be really mindful of those things. And again, you know, make sure that, that you're, you're eliminating as much of that itchiness and irritation that you can because I think that would be something that would probably really start giving me a headache is that constant in the background irritation. I think I tend to kind of tense up because for me, my headaches, my headaches come from low mid back. Um, that travels up, it gets tight in my traps, goes up the sides of my neck and really grabs on right at the atlas, kind of the base of my head. And then my headaches from there will come forward into my eyes. So I know where mine start, but I tend that happens if I'm tetsing a little bit. And you know, constant irritation can definitely make you do that. I certainly do not want to scare you off from dipping your toes into trying out wigs um, and helper hair toppers as well. Now regarding toppers and headaches, I have never gotten a, a headache from a topper. I don't even know if I've ever actually gotten a headache from wearing a wig, but um, I think if you are experiencing headaches with your toppers, you need to pay attention to how tight you're clipping that in. Again, you might be really causing inflammation and then stress to the scalp and those muscles might tense up and cause headaches. So you do not have to have those clips too tight, you guys, at all. It, it, you need to really just make sure that you're not getting any uh, irritation or pulling. It can cause headaches, it can cause breakage, it can then cause balding, it can just cause redness. And you know, it's just like if you wear a ponytail too tight, you remember when you were a kid and your mom would put a ponytail in and brush it up and brush it up and brush it up and really get that baby in and pull it at the end. And then when you took it out at the end of the day, it was like, ha ha ha. You know, that's, that's not good. And you know, that's gonna cause issues and breakage and all kinds of problems. So don't get your clips too tight. I would recommend, you know, wearing a couple different types of toppers. Make sure the clips aren't in the same place every single day. Changing up the style and the coverage of the caps is gonna um, have you clip it in different areas all the time. But the main issue is making sure that you're not doing it too tight. I think we have a sense of security when we feel that those clips are pulling a little bit. It's like, oh yeah, that one's in there really good. No, we do not want that to happen. Take that, pop that one out, 
you know loosen it up and then you don't you just don't need to do that so that can definitely cause headaches I think and toppers are built in different ways as well you know you have different types of cap constructions with those too you might have some that itch you more than others because you can't wear a wig cap underneath a topper so you know again I think it's going to take some experimentation you're going to learn a lot and it's so individual so while I know it's helpful to watch videos like this it really is individual and and for me talking about sensitivities itchiness and all of that is gonna uh, you know because I am super sensitive so what bothers me is probably not going to bother you so that's why I, I hesitate a little bit talking about these kinds of questions because um, I'm not sure where you fall in that realm of sensitivity, you know? But anyway, all right guys, thank you so much for watching. Always hope these are helpful for you. And if you have questions, please put them down below in the comment box. I, it, I you know, I generally am not gonna answer them there because I want to make a video about it. So um, don't be alarmed if I don't answer your question down there, but it definitely will go on a list if I feel like, hey, this is a good one. I bet a lot of people have this question. Um, anyway, okay guys, we'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.